I'm very passionate about the game. Um, I look at it like a way out, because uh, the neighborhood where I'm from, you, you know, you lucky to make it to the age 18. It's a, uh, it's a blessing. Um, you know, I got a lot of best friends that passed away. Um, matter of fact, my best friend, we all used to say we was gonna go to Neville and win and get a ring, and you know, he got shot. Growing up, um, well, my my life growing up, um, it was uh, it was an exciting at time, and sometimes it was it was tough. Um, growing up, I remember um, I lived in a neighborhood called Parkview, one of the baddest neighborhoods in Monroe. Um, you know, a lot of crime. A lot of bad stuff. People said that nothing good can, couldn't come from it. And um, we lived out there at one point when I was younger, and then we moved away and we moved back. And um, you know, I had best friends that I had. I had a tight group of friends. Um, you know, Ladera Sloan, Kevante Turpin, Rayshawn Ellis. Um, you know, a lot of them. We was best friends out there. Uh, we stuck to, close together. And. Um, you know, I was in junior high. I always knew I wanted to play football growing up. Um, it was just kind of hard. My mama, she she tried, she did like the best she could do, but a lot of times she just really didn't have time for me. And I ain't see my daddy at all. Um, he wasn't really there. None of them was really there back then. But it was just like real hard. My grandmother's, uh, my grandmother, Gloria Smith, she was like, uh, she was kind of like the backbone. She like always came through when anything happened. I started playing football when I was like seven years old, maybe. Actually, um, it's weird to say this, but my daddy, um, you know, like I didn't really get to see him a lot, of, spend a lot of time with him, and he didn't have time for me. But this one day I was at my grandmother's house and he drove up in the yard with a football in his hand and he gave it to me. And even though I didn't get to see my dad a lot, I still wanted to be like him. So I, when he gave me that football, that was the only thing he had ever really given me. So when he gave it to me, it just intrigued me to know that, you know, I always wanted my dad to be there, but when he gave me the ball, it just did something to me, and I wanted to keep it up and just keep running with it. I'm very passionate about the game. Um, I look at it like a way out, uh, like a meal ticket, honestly. Because uh, the neighborhood where I'm from, you, you know, you lucky to make it to the age 18. It's a, uh, it's a blessing. Um, you know, I got a lot of best friends that, passed away. Um, matter of fact, my best friend, we all used to say we was going to go to Neville and win and get a ring and, you know, he got shot. Me, him, and Kevante Turpin, you know, that was our goal. And, you know, and Terrence Butler, all us, we was best friends. The goal was to just be successful. But at the time, our actions weren't in line with our goals and we didn't have no guidance. And, you know, he ended up dying from a drive-by shooting. My goals at Neville was to win a state championship and to like get recruited and just be able to go to college and get a free education. My legacy is, um, I mean, I honestly feel like I was the greatest. I mean, I played D-line like the first three years of my career and I was very good and my senior year I had to switch over and play offensive line and they taught me how to play this position in a week and after a week I was better than everybody else in the district. It was great to... Uh, been have been a player for Neville High School, and Neville High School changed my life tremendously because when I got there, um, it ended up bringing me closer to one of my best friends. Um, now his name Courtney Wallace, great great uh, mentor, kind of role model. You know I look up to him, and, and I'm older than him, but he's one of my best friends. Um, his family also stepped into my life. Um, I really appreciate his mom and his dad and the stuff that they have done for me to help me get to where I'm at. And I'm just real blessed to have them. And you know, not only them, I had a lot of other people in my corner fighting for me. Um, when I was younger, my mama, she never could come to the games. My dad and them, they never came to the games. And uh, my other best friend, Daniel Collins, his mother, Susan Collins, and um, her family and all of them, they just they took me in like I was theirs. Sue Collins hasn't missed a game since Pee Wee football. If it was a junior high game. If it was a high school game, if it was a scrimmage, even when I wasn't playing on the field, you know, they were there. And I really, I just want to say thank you to everybody that helped me get to where I'm at now. Ah, the recruiting process. Um, it's been it's been good so far. Sometimes it's been kind of hard. You know, people told me at first I was too short and I never, I wasn't going to make it. Uh, nobody was going to want me. And, um, you know, one day, um, I got hooked up with Get Recruited 365, and uh, Marcus Beckwith, uh, he came, took some pictures of me, 
recorded some of my film and sent it off to colleges. And then one day I started getting invites to Nike camps, rivals camps, college letters started to appear. And it just all fell out the sky after that. Um, I got a few schools that, that have offered me, that's recruiting me really hard. Uh, North Texas was recruiting me real hard. Nickel State was. Western Kentucky, Kentucky was. Actually, I listed Western Kentucky as my top school um, in my rivals camp interview. I listed them as my top school at one point in time. Um, University of Arkansas Monticello was recruiting me uh, real hard. Um, even Middle Tennessee called me. Um, Troy was a little bit. Um, even um, Texas Southern. So. It was great. It's all great to uh, just been, uh, you know, being recruited. He's actually one of the coolest people that you've ever been around and get to know. He's had, he has a history that that people often think about and sometimes might affect him, but he still don't let none of that get to him. He's been through a lot. He's seen a lot. He's actually seen death happen in front of him. So. Like right next, his best friend got killed right next to him. So he's he's he, he's a testimony, a living testimony. And I think he's actually one of the coolest people to be around. Well, it was from freshman year to now, I can remember a point of time where he was just getting in trouble a lot. And, you know, couldn't stay out of trouble all the ways in the office and stuff like that. And I can remember, I, I know it was hard for him to transfer from D line to R line. Because I can remember the, uh, we was at a track practice and Coach walked up to him and told him that he was going to be playing offensive line. So he had to start liking him or whatever. And McCoy, you know, he got upset. He was just like, I'm not playing offensive line. He went to the other coaches and, like, Coach, he tried to make me play offensive line, but and he he just eventually had to learn how to take that. He, he played offensive line and actually probably is one of the best guards in the state of Louisiana. I realized that I could finally play at the next level when uh, I got invited to a rivals camp. And when I went to the rivals camp, uh, I competed against one of the best athletes in the state of Louisiana, Cameron Elof. Uh, you know, I'm not going to brag on myself because I'm a very humble young man, but I did exceptionally well against Cameron Elof and a lot of other um, players at the rivals camp. And um, it gave me a rating, and college coaches finally started to look at me. And along after the Nike camp, um, the Rivals camp, I got invited to the Nike camp where I beat um, an offensive lineman, Ryan Cox, and I beat another guy that had a lot, of, they were highly recruited. And after that, it, it all fell out the sky, you know. I already went to the LSU camp and competed alongside some of the best players in the state like Isaiah Washington. Uh, you know, I even got a chance to get a little one-on-ones with Cam Robinson at the LSU camp. And, um, you know, I met Coach Brick Haley at LSU, and, you know, he, um, you know, he talked to me. He liked my footwork, and, you know, he was just proud of how I participated at the camp. I went to the Alabama camp and even did exceptionally well. I got all saving. So at that point right there in my mind, it clicked that, hey, I can actually do this. Like, I, I really got this. The advice I would give the next generation of athletes is don't start out like I started out. Um, Probably around from probably the fifth grade, probably to eighth grade, I was uh, I was kind of lost. I went astray. You know, I was out there running with the wrong crowds, being a thug. Um, you know, sometimes you know I, I didn't want to get up and go to school, even though I still went sometimes. I was just out there with the wrong crowds, fighting. I thought it was cool, trying to be in gangs, and it wasn't. Actually, um, I paid a tremendous price for that. Um, I ended up seeing one of my best friends named Ladarius Long end up uh, getting killed in the drive-by shooting and you know at, at that point when that happened um, it was just like I had an epiphany, like I clicked and I realized that you know God was still walking with me and that I could change my life. My name is McCoy Reese and you know as of now I'm committed to the University of Arkansas Monticello, Go Bull Weavers, where I plan to go there and end up getting drafted to the NFL.